Hi friends, welcome to another session of engineering mechanics. Currently we are dealing plane trusses. So in this session also we try to do few more numericals. Refer fourth numerical of your classroom workbook. In a truss, number of members is equal to number of joints. In a truss, if they don't, if they don't mention anything, you know, you have to understand the truss is perfect truss or rigid truss, right? So in a truss, number of members equal to number of joints. That means M is equal to J. Find number of members or number of joints. Right. We have to find what is M, what is J. We know in all perfect trusses, 2J is equal to M plus 3. J is equal to M. So 2M is equal to M plus 3. Right, bring M to left side, 2M minus M, M, so M is equal to 3. If M is equal to 3, J is equal to also 3. This kind of truss is called whole truss. In any truss, if number of members is equal to number of joints, the truss is called whole truss. Please copy. Sorry, this is a 26th numerical, man, right? This is a 26th numerical. 26th numerical. Twenty sixth numerical. In previous session, we did twenty third numerical, twenty fourth numerical, twenty fifth numerical. I might have written wrong the number. At the end of previous session, we did 23rd, 24th, and 25th numericals, right? If I wrote wrong, please correct, right? Right. Let's move to another numerical. This is 27th numerical. 27th numerical from our classroom workbook. 27. 27th numerical so here a truss is given right here a truss is given every joint is pin joint so here a hinged support is given so here a roller support is provided right so this is a and this is b so here a block is attached, mass of this is 2400 kg and here another mass is attached, this is also 2000 kg, this is G, this is C and the distance between this and this is 3 meters and this is also 3 meters, this is also 3 meters and this is 4 meters. So first you may copy this, then I dictate what to find. So this support is roller support, this support is hinged support. So here G is taken as 10 meter per second square. G is taken as 10 meter per second square. The red down man, find support reactions. Find support reactions. Find support reactions. That means you have to find what is RA, what is RB. Find support reactions. Right. 
So first let us think about roller support man, you know. About roller support, there shall be only one reaction. Roller can resist only one motion. That is why one reaction will induce about roller support. This is roller. Who is providing support to roller? This plane, this vertical plane is providing support to roller. So always about roller support, reaction induces perpendicular to supporting plane. About any roller support, the reaction will induce perpendicular to supporting plane of that roller. Here, this vertical plane is providing support to roller. So obviously, reaction about roller is perpendicular to this supporting plane like this. This is RB. This RB is perpendicular to supporting plane of roller. Now come to here. About hinged support, there shall be two reactions. So I may understand, I may assume horizontal reaction as H and vertical reaction as V. H is horizontal reaction about A. V is vertical reaction about A. There shall be two reactions about hinged support. But of course, always they need not present man. Sometimes they present. Sometimes only one reaction present. It is always better to assume two reactions may induce about hinged support. So here we have to find what is total reaction about support B. What is total reaction about support A. Okay. So actually... This problem is based on matter of moments, man, right? Here we don't use any concept of trusses. So what we do is, write down, on taking moments about A, if I take moments about A, I can bypass V and H. I need not worry about V and H. Only one unknown will be there. That unknown I can find. On taking moments about A, the first, what is moment because of this 2400? So, because of this 2400 weight, of course, the force will be like this, 2400 times of G, here, 2000 times of G, this kind of force will induce. Because of this force, what moment will come about A, clockwise moment. So, 2400 into 10 into 6, here 10 means G, 6 is distance between this force and support A, plus because of this also, a clockwise moment will come. So, 2000 into 10 into 3. Then, because of RB, an anti-clockwise moment will come about A, like this. So, that is by minus, minus RB. And what is the distance between RB and A? 4 equal to 0. This entire structure is in static equilibrium. So, sum of moments about any point of a structure in static equilibrium will be zero. So from this I can find what is RB. So RB is equal to 69 kilonewtons. 69 kilonewtons or 69,000 newtons. This is RB. Since I got positive value, my assumption is correct. I assume RB is acting towards right. Since I got positive value here, RB is correct. Direction of RB is okay. Now we have to find what is V, what is H. So let us use method of rectangular components here. Or of course, uh, you can use or you can take moments about B also. Man. By taking moments about B, you can find H because V is exactly passing through B. So, V doesn't have any moments about RB, about B. Only moments because of H will come. But we try to use method of rectangular components. You can use method of moments also, right? So, I present all the forces on the truss like this. A downward force of 24,000 is acting. 2,400 into 10, 24,000. Another downward force is acting. What is the downward force? 20,000. And one upward force is acting. That is V. A rightward force is acting. That is RB. Another rightward force is acting. That is H. I presented all the forces which are acting on this truss in the form of a vector diagram. Okay? 
if any structure is in static equilibrium we can present all forces which are acting on that structure in the form of vector diagram like this now you can easily understand sum of upward loads is equal to sum of downward loads sum of upward loads is only v sum of downward loads is 24000 plus 20000 44000 so i can easily say v is equal to 44000 sum of upward forces equal to sum of downward forces this is v then sum of rightward forces is equal to sum of leftward forces sum of rightward forces are rb plus h that is equal to zero sum of sum of leftward loads is equal to zero and from this h is equal to minus rb rb already i know rb is 69000 this is minus 69000 what is the meaning of minus 69000 i assume h is acting towards right since I got negative value here, H is not acting towards right, H is acting towards left. Okay, that is the meaning. H is not rightward, H is leftward. Now, two forces are acting about giant A. H is acting, B is acting. How do you find resultant force? Okay, how do you find resultant force? I am writing here, resultant reaction about A is equal to square root of h square plus v square then ra is equal to if you simplify this 81.83 81.83 kilo newtons so total reaction about a is 81.83 total reaction about b is 69 kilo newtons please copy so first by taking moments about a i found rb once i found rb i took all the forces which are acting on trust then i found v thereafter h thereafter resultant reaction about a so please copy So this problem could be taken in measure of moments, but anyway, so actually H is not rightward, H is leftward. Why? Because here I got minus 69,000. So H is not acting towards right, H is acting towards left. I hope you copied. Many students may confuse between clockwise moment and anti-clockwise moment. Generally, students would confuse what is clockwise moment, what is anti-clockwise moment. So let us try to understand. So here a force is acting like this. And about point O, I have to take moments. 
of course the distance between these two is x right distance between these two is x or perpendicular distance between line of action of force and the point o is x this is p will it induce clockwise moment or anti clockwise moment will it induce clockwise moment or anti clockwise moment so you may extend this line like this man this is line of action of force this is line of action of force along vertical line p is acting one moment you can imagine like this one moment you can imagine like this other moment you can imagine like this one moment you can imagine like this other moment you can imagine like this okay think about this moment man this moment is intersecting line of action of force this moment is not intersecting line of action of force this arc is not intersecting line of action of force but this arc is intersecting line of action of force somewhere here is it clockwise moment or anti clockwise moment man the arc of moment should not intersect line of action of force this arc is not intersecting line of action of force so this is the direction of moment man the moment means force into shortest distance man you know not longest longest distance so this arc is not intersecting line of action of force and this arc is intersecting line of action of force somewhere here so arc of moment should not intersect line of action of force so obviously moment because of this force is clockwise not anti clockwise this is wrong man right this is what is this arc you are moving like this you are moving in clockwise direction in your clock handles rotate like this okay like this handles rotate so that is why it is clockwise moment another example man here a force is there here a force is there like this and somewhere here okay so here a force is there this force is p this force is p and this is line of action of force and i have to take moment about a point o this distance is x will it induce clockwise moment or anti clockwise moment which moment it may induce draw two arcs man so from this you draw one arc like this and you draw one more arc like this in clockwise direction you draw one arc in anti clockwise direction you draw one more arc which arc is not intersecting line of action of force this arc this arc is not intersecting line of action of force line of action of force is like this in vertical direction this is line of action of force this arc is not intersecting the line of action of force this arc is intersecting or this arc is taking less angle this arc is taking more angle man the direction of moment is in the way or it is defined moment is defined with respect to shortest distance in two ways you can understand the angle made by arc should be less or the arc of moment should not intersect line of action of force between these two arcs this arc is taking less angle or less distance or less length or it is not intersecting line of action of force so this is the direction of moment not this is the direction of moment this is wrong man so in this case moment is not clockwise moment is anti clockwise you are moving like this right you are moving like this in reverse direction of clock 
in clock all handles rotate clockwise so here this moment is anti clockwise okay so here moment is clockwise here moment is anti clockwise right if anybody confused just use this shortcut like things man right the arc of moment should not intersect line of action of force or uh, about the end of a point end of a force you can draw two arcs the arc which carries less angle is correct direction the arc which carries more angle it is wrong direction so like this you can remember you can easily identify the moments now okay all right next we do few more numericals you may refer numerical number 28 numerical number 28 from your classroom workbook so here a truss is given like this so here a pin joint is given so here also a pin joint is given this is a this is b this is c at c a downward load of 1 kN is acting so here another member is there this joint is a this joint is d this is f yet e also another force of 1 kN is acting another force of 1 kN is acting this is l length of ac is l this is also l this is also l this is also l this is also l so first you copy this then i dictate what to find so right support is roller support man right this support is roller support this is f the question is like this find force carried by find force carried by member bc find force carried by member bc find force carried by member bc right we are to find how much force will be there in this member bc man right but think about joint b yet joint b only two members are connected this member this member only two members joint b doesn't carry any external load no force is acting at b that is second and these two joints are non collinear when two non collinear members are joined by a pin joint without external load force carried by those two members will be zero it is straight forward formula man 
both these numbers will carry zero load. So the answer is zero. Force carried by member base is zero. Okay. What about force carried by AC then? Here there shall be one support reaction man, right? One support reaction will be there because both the loads are vertically downward. Both actions are downward. Reaction should be upward man, right? So reaction should be upward. Here there shall be another reaction. It is RF man, right? R -A -R -F. If this truss carries any horizontal load, there shall be two forces here. One vertical reaction, one horizontal reaction. About pin jointed support, there shall be two reactions, but not always. If structure carries only vertical load, only vertical reaction will be there. If structure carries only horizontal load, horizontal reaction could be there, like that man. So, RA, but this member carries zero load man. So, since this member is carrying zero load, just ignore this member, this member is not there. Then what is RA? Nobody is there to balance this RA. That means RA also zero. If RA is zero, RA is zero, this is also zero. Then what is force carried with this member? This also will be zero. <coughs> that means this member carries zero, this member carries zero, this member carries zero. That means the entire left part is carrying zero load. You have to ignore all these things because no load is acting, right? No load is acting. So just ignore all these things now. Now, what about this man? Is it collapsible truss or is it truss? If I apply loads like this, can this roller support resist it, man? So definitely, roller support cannot resist moments. So this force and this force will induce moments about this point. Roller support or pin jointed support. They don't resist any moment. It is collapsible truss. This truss will collapse. Or at the beginning itself, you understand, man, you know, in the given truss, what is number of members? Number of members is 8. Number of joints? 6. What is 2J? 2 into 6, 12. What is M plus 3? 11. So in the given truss, consider left also, I mean, total truss. If you consider total truss, in the total stress, J is equal to 6, M is equal to 8, 2J is equal to 12, and M plus 3 is equal to 11. So, 2J is more than M plus 3. Definitely, it is collapsible truss. If you apply any external load, if you apply this 1 kilo newton, 1 kilo newton, immediately truss will collapse. Once it collapses, what is load carried by any member, man? You know, I should say, load carried by any member of this truss will be zero. Not only member BC, any member carries zero load man, right? Because the truss will collapse. So no, after collapse man, no member carries nothing man. So this is a collapsible truss and the load carried by any member will be zero. Let's move to another numerical, numerical number 29. Numerical number 29. From our classroom workbook, you may refer numerical number 29. In this numerical, a truss is given. So, left support is hinged support. And uh, right support is placed on rollers. This is E. This is A. Okay, this is B and this is C, this is D, this is H, and this is G. At G, a downward load of P is acting. 
so please copy this trust So in this trust, we have to identify zero force numbers. Which members carry zero force? Which member carries zero force? So this trust is carrying only one external load. We have to identify zero force members. Right. Let us identify. Observe joint H. At joint H, three members are connected. This member, this member, and this member. Member AH, member HG, member BH. Three members are connected at H without any external load. At joint H, no external load is acting. No external force is acting. Of course, no reaction also not acting and no support is there. The three members are joined at H without external load and out of these three, two members are collinear. This member is collinear to this member. This member, member AH is collinear to member HG. Then what? The third non-collinear member doesn't carry any load. So this member doesn't carry any load. Out of three members, two are collinear. The third non-collinear member may carry zero load. Now come to joint B. Actually at joint B, four members are joined. But out of these four members, one member carries zero load. If any member carries zero load, just remove that element, man. Just ignore that element. It doesn't make any difference. So practically only three members are connected here because this member carries zero load. Just ignore it. Just forget about it. So only three members are joined at B. And at join B, any external load is acting. No external load is acting. So only three members are joined without any external load. Out of these three members, two members are collinear. Member AB and BC, they are along same line, man, right? A, B and B, C are collinear, then the third non-collinear member carries zero load. So definitely this member also carries right. Now come to right side. What is this joint? This is F. Come to right side of the things. Observe joint F. At joint F, three members are connected without any external load. Without any external load. And out of these three members, two members are collinear. This member and this member are collinear. This member and this member are collinear. So the third non-collinear member will carry zero load. This member carries zero load. Now come to joint D. Joint D. About joint D. About joint D. Again three members are connected. Again three members. Of course four members are connected. But this member carries zero load. If any member carries zero load. Just ignore that. Just forget about that member. Practically only three members are joined at D. Without any external load. Out of these three members. This member and this member are collinear. The third non-collinear member will carry zero load. I should say it also carries zero load. Now come to joint G. Here one point I want to explain man, right? About joint G. 
what forces are acting about giant g a downward force of p is acting this is g man right and i assume this member CB, cg carries tensile force i may call this as tgc right so with respect to giant g this force will be upward this is uh, tgc and i assume even this member carries tension i may call this as thg even i may assume this is also carrying tension this is tgf so with respect to g this force is towards left this is towards left that is thg and with respect to giant g this force is towards right this is tgf tgf here one more shortcut i want to share here about giant g four forces are acting p is acting tgf is acting tgc is acting thg is acting four forces are acting out of these four forces these two forces are collinear these two forces are collinear these two are collinear these two are collinear nothing else is there right so directly we know if any structure is in static equilibrium sum of downward force is equal to sum of upward force so this p and tgc will be equal similarly sum of rightward force is equal to sum of leftward force definitely this tgf should be equal to thg so straight away you can write tgc is equal to p and thg is equal to tgf if four forces are acting about a point out of these four forces these two forces are collinear these two forces are collinear not only collinear in man these two are perpendicular to these two these these two forces are perpendicular to these two forces in this scenario directly you can write this force is equal to this this force is equal to this from principles of static equilibrium so this is a solution man right so this member carries zero load this member carries zero load this member carries zero load this member also carries zero load remaining elements may carry loads okay right let us move to another numerical another numerical right refer numerical number 30 try to understand man we are not using either method of joints or method of sections so far by using shortcuts we are doing right so here a truss is given again numerical number 30 a truss is given like this a truss is given like this left side support is hinged support right support is placed on rollers like this this is a this is c this is b and this is d a d an external load of 100 newton is acting this is 60 degrees this is another 60 degrees this is also 60 this is also 60 degrees so please copy so here a truss is given and we have to find what is tbc we have to find what is tbc tbc is equal to how much a 
it is your left hand works observe joint b at joint b only two elements are connected without any external load and those two elements are not collinear when two non collinear members are joined by a pin joint without external load those two members carry zero load so this element carry zero load this element also carry zero load okay so the answer is zero the load carried by member b is zero and you may think about this man is it collapsible truss or ordinary truss number of elements here uh, how many elements 1 uh, 2 3 4 5 6 6 elements are there how many joints 1 2 3 4 5 joints 2j means 10 and uh, m plus 3 means 9 it is also a collapsible truss and uh, since it is collapsible truss all members may carry zero load try to examine right okay the answer is zero here right the load carried by this is zero right let's move to another question refer numerical number 31 refer numerical number 31 numerical number 31 here a truss is given so left side support is hinged support right support is placed on rollers like this this is a this is b this is c this is k then this is j then this is b this is i this is e this is h this is f and this is g and uh, here at b a load of p is acting this is g and a load of p is acting so in this problem we have to identify which member carries zero load which member carries zero load or we have to identify zero force elements zero force members so first copy then we identify
right let us try to examine which members carry zero load so first you may identify joint b about joint b three members are joined member a b member b c member b k three members are joined at b out of these three members two members are collinear a b and b c are collinear and joint b doesn't carry any force so in this scenario the third non collinear member will carry zero force so this element will definitely carry zero force now think about joint k think about joint k now actually about joint k four elements are joined but out of these four elements element bk carries zero load whichever element carries zero load just ignore it just forget about that member physically it may present but in our analysis it doesn't exist so practically at k only three members are joined member ak member kj and member kc out of these three members two members are collinear member ak is collinear to member kj out of three members two members are collinear and at joint k no external load is acting nothing is acting so in this scenario what is load carried by the third non collinear member so out of this member this member and this member member kc is non collinear member that non collinear member will carry zero load now come to joint c actually at joint c four members are connected but out of these four members member ck carries zero load this member doesn't carry any load simply ignore it forget about that member so practically about c only three members are joined member bc member cg member cj out of these three members two members are collinear member bc is collinear to member cj member cj is non collinear member this non collinear member will carry zero load many times you know students would confuse man the shortcut is valid when joint doesn't carry any external load if joint carries a force then you cannot use this man okay if joint doesn't carry any force any external force or support reaction man any external force or support reaction then this is valid so this is also zero all right now come to j join j about join j how many members are joined so this member is joined this member is joined this member is joined this member is joined four members are joined about join j but out of this four members member jc doesn't carry any load so which our element doesn't carry load it just ignore it so practically about j only three members are joined this member this member this member out of these three members two are collinear members which are collinear member member kj and member ji these two are collinear and the third non collinear member doesn't carry any load try to understand at j also no external load is acting no support reaction is acting okay so since left half is symmetric to right half right side also we can identify the members of zero force so definitely this member carry zero force this member also carry zero force this member also carry zero force this member also may carry zero force and I try to examine whether this truss is collapsible truss or ordinary truss if it is collapsible truss all members carry zero load the truss will collapse under external load of p if it is ordinary truss remaining members may carry some load okay by using shortcuts we can identify zero force elements most of the times in gate exam they ask you what is load in member bk or kc like that so a most in uh, you know more than 50% of times the answer for gate question is zero in plain truss right if nothing works just assume answer as zero put zero man so like that you can do right so this is 
numerical number 31 let's move to another numerical let's move to another numerical you may see numerical number 32 numerical number 32 from our classroom workbook from our classroom workbook you may refer numerical number numerical number 32 uh, this question came in gate 2004 gate 2004 so here a trust is given trust is given like this so this joint is pin jointed or hinged support and uh, here also one more joint is there but here roller support is given this is a pin joint this is a pin joint and uh, this is also a pin joint this is o n l k and m here 100 kg weight is placed 100 kg weight is placed this is 45 degrees okay so this is numerical number 32 and this question came in gate 2004 this is gate 2004 question gate 2004 question what to find here we have to find what is force in member ln what is force in member ln what is force in member ln so to confuse you they have given even distances this is maybe two meters this is one meter this is one meter right so like this they have given distances also we have to find what is force carried by member ln member ln okay do you require any measure of joints or measure of sections man right by using our shortcuts you can easily say about joint l three members are connected member kl member lm member ln without any external force at joint l no external force is acting and three members are joined out of these three members two members are collinear which members are collinear member kl is collinear to member lm then what is non-collinear member ln is non-collinear member so the third non-collinear member carries zero load that's what we are thinking for last 20 30 minutes right so definitely ln carries zero load the answer is zero force carried by memory ln is zero okay This is the uh, end of the session. In coming session, we are going to learn what is mother of joints, what is mother of sections, for what kind of problems you may use mother of joints, for what kind of problems you may use mother of sections. In mother of joints, what procedure should be followed? In mother of sections, what procedure should be followed? So these things we are going to learn apart from doing some numericals. Okay? So until next session, have a great day. Thank you.